Do you love playing SUDA connectors, but you're not 100% sure how they work? Stick around, I'm gonna talk about that today and give you some general tips for playing these hands better. Let's get started. Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and today we're gonna to continue a series that I started a long time ago. And I mean a long time ago. And if you've been following this channel for over a decade, you may have actually seen a video with this exact title and concept that was taken down by YouTube for a link in the description box to a poker site. Great job, YouTube. And if this video doesn't get at least as many views as that video, I'm gonna be pretty angry. But all joking aside, let's start talking about pseudo connectors. Now, most people just love playing pseudo connectors, and I think it's because they really are just this gigantic ball of potential. They can catch a billion different kinds of draws, the pairs can improve to things like two pair or trips later on in the hand. There's just a lot of potential with these types of hands, and as such, people tend to play them a lot pre flop, but they don't really fully understand how they tend to do post flop. And that's what I want to cover today as well as give you some general tips for playing these hands better So the first thing to understand is that there is a large spectrum in pseudo connectors and kind of the way that they tend to function The very low side of the pseudo connector spectrum like 4-3 suited is going to be very different than a hand like Queen Jack suited And that's very very important to understand So let's start by looking at how different pseudo connectors hit flops using a tool called Flopzilla And let's start by exploring a low pseudo connector first Let's just say 5-4 suited and see how things actually factor out and this is a across all flops. So you notice if we look at smashes, and that's being kind of two pair better, flopped flushes, all that kind of fun stuff, you notice that that's happening roughly five and a half percent of the time. If we go in and we look also at how often it's hitting kind of single pair hands, so that's going to be mostly third pair and some middle pair, that's happening roughly 29% of the time. And if we go in and we look at how often it's catching draws, open and straight draws and flush draws, coming in around 19.3, if we include gut shots, both one card and two carters were up to roughly 34 percent and that's not exactly fair because there is some overlap happening in the draw and also pair right it's possible that 5-4 suited catches something like bottom pair on a board where it also has a flush draw so that is going to kind of get a little bit of overlap you can go through here and remove all this to get a pure number for the overall draws but just giving a little bit of extra context if you're not really familiar with using flopzilla pro now instead of looking at the bottom bottom side of the suited connectors, let's look at a stronger one like Jack-10 suited, which is going to flop things a little bit differently. So if we go in and we look at these smashes, so again, the two pair are better, that's roughly around the same, right? 5.6%, I believe is the exact same. But when we start looking at things like top pair, middle pair, or just general single pairs, we notice, yes, it's still close, roughly 29%, but notice the very, very big difference, right? The 5-4 suited was barely catching any top pair, was mostly between middle and third, versus this Jack-10 10 is flopping a lot of top pair and middle pair very little is going to be the third pair side of things and when we go in and we add in the draws as well especially with the gut shots roughly the exact same numbers so the big thing that's changing here isn't so much the frequency of hits versus misses but rather the density of how those pairs are functioning again more top and middle when you have these higher pseudo connectors which should make a lot of sense so while both sides of the pseudo connector spectrum are flopping draws at roughly the same frequencies it's really important to think about future streets. If you have something like 5-4 suited, it's less likely to be able to hit valuable pairs on future streets, say it's a king 7-6 board, whereas it's more likely when you have something like jack-10 suited on 9-4-3 with a flush draw that you can catch a single pair later that can be valuable and win more often at showdown. So keep in mind that in general it's better to have higher cards that can catch winnable hands later, even when you just have gut shots early on, than it is to have nothing. So I would much prefer to have jack-10 rather than 5-4, even on a board of 8-7 deuce, both of them have gut shots, but I'd much prefer having the gut shot in overs as opposed to the gut shot in unders. And with all that said, I want to leave you with some general tips for playing suited connectors better. First and foremost is to raise with these hands a decent chunk of the time pre-fob, especially when you're RFIing, sometimes with isolating, sometimes the lower ones do a little bit better limping behind, but especially when it comes to open raising, these are oftentimes going to be included. If you look through something like the GTO Ranges app from Red Chip Poker, 
Joker in both the six max and the full ring configuration. These suited connectors tend to be involved even from under the gun. Of course, a higher preference towards the higher suited connectors as opposed to the lower ones, but that shouldn't be too shocking based upon everything we've talked about so far. Tip number two is to remember that these hands do much better in position post-flop. So even when you're thinking about pre-flop, what do you want to play? In position with these hands is going to be much, much better. It's more easy to decide when to float, when to semi-bluff raise, when to value bet thinly, when to check behind and take draws for cheap. You just can do way more of those kind of things in position as opposed to out of position. So post-flop is just far too complex to summarize it into a single video, especially just a single quick tip. But if you are looking to work on these kind of things, especially with suited connectors post-flop, I would highly suggest checking out my post-flop workbook. The post-flop workbook is going to guide you through plenty of technical exercises with suited connectors and also lots of other hands as well to help you work through these sorts of things. Understand when you can value bet, what your opponent's ranges likely are, how often your opponent is likely folding or not folding, help you decide what to do with marginal pairs on the river, all of that sort of fun stuff. Splitsuit.com slash post-flop to learn more and there's a complete answer key and also complete companion course that comes along with it. So if you want to work on your post-flop skills with these hands, definitely make sure to check that out. Again, splitsuit.com slash post-flop to jump in. And tip number three is to be cautious with these hands in multi-way pots pre-flop. Now I get that people love to play these hands in multi-way pots, 100%, especially because there can be lots of sources of implied odds from weaker hands and you can get involved for a fairly cheap amount and possibly win a nice size pot. That is all well and good. However, you really have to make sure to pay attention to stack depth in these situations. If you're getting involved in a multi-way pot, yes, you get a better pre-flop price. However, at the behest sometimes of a smaller SPR, and you have to remember that these sorts of hands perform much, much better with deeper SPRs. Really shallow SPRs don't allow them to draw to their maximum flexibility. You're oftentimes going to have to stick it in with a semi-bluff. And while that can be okay, it might not necessarily be the best way to exercise your edge. So keep that in mind. That is kind of the trade-off you're making with this kind of hand getting involved in a multi-way pot. And even in spots where the stack depth is decently deep and you have a lot of that post-flop flexibility, make sure to be aware of reverse implied odds. You can easily find yourself in spots, especially with these lower suited connectors, where you end up hitting a flush, but you are out flushed by somebody else and you end up paying off a massive amount. These higher suited connectors are going to typically do much better simply because then it pushes more secondary or lower suited connectors into your opponent's range that again, you can be collecting the implied odds rather than just simply paying off. Same thing when it comes to flopping things like two pair and building the pot. These are kind of things that again, the higher ones tend to do better rather than the lower ones. So again, not saying don't play these at all, just be aware before you start playing them in all situations and never ever finding that full button preflop. And since the conversation is already starting to bend a little bit more towards postflop than the original preflop intention of this video, make sure to watch this one next. It will take you through a bunch of postflop tips when it comes to playing suited connectors. And trust me, they're going to be very, very helpful. Go watch that next. Enjoy. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you back shortly with a brand new video. Good luck out there and happy grinding.